Bride of Higara. This is Captain Soban of the fleet, Farron Shah. Looks like you could use a hand. Attention all Sobani, pick your targets and engage. Hello everyone, this is Captain Soban. Welcome aboard the Starship and Normal Prize for another episode of Homeworld Tactical Fleet Simulator Ship Showcase Series. Today we are going to be taking a look at all of the capital ships that you can build on the Higaran side. So before we get going, obviously this is going to be a long video. It's probably going to be longer than my normal video because we have a lot to talk about for all of the capital ships we can build. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So the first one we can make, um, the one that you can see right in front of you, is the auxiliary carrier, the CF-74. This is essentially the Homeworld 2 carrier from the original game. So let's read about it. So Auxiliary Carrier CV-74, primary role, ship production and repair. Secondary role, ship transport and resource controller. Subclass, carrier. Type, support carrier. And it takes 65 seconds to build. I like how when, the, um, how when you look at your capital ships, they'll tell you how long it takes for them to actually get done. Because some of them do take a while. Tech level, Mark 1 production ship, engagement range short, medium, it doesn't really have any type of long range uh, weapons, so it's just for short engagements. Prerequisites, capital ship facility. This can be built as soon as you build your capital ship facility on whatever uh, production ship that you're using. Armament, it comes with three KAC-90 dual kinetic turrets, which I believe are designed to take out fighters. Then comes with four KAC 35RF hull defense guns, which are, I believe, they're a little bit more. Well, they actually might be weaker. Those ones might be the anti fighter weapons. The other ones might be like more heavy fighters and like other reconnaissance uh, um, anti stuff. So let's see. Like there's one gun right there. I think there's another one on the back, maybe on the bottom. Yep, right there. Those are the, the main guns. And then it has hull defense guns around it. Um, it can also be upgraded with a LAC 2500 dual um, ion cannon turret, which is a 2.5 gigawatt ion cannon. Um, it gets built right here, Copy. which I can go ahead and build it for you guys so you can Good. see it. I believe this just comes out as a um, uh, as something you can build as soon as you get the ship constructed. But once you build this turret, you won't be able to build any of your uh, like uh, sensor stuff, like advanced sensors array or hyperspace sensors, because this takes up that slot. Once that's built, I will go ahead and um, show you guys. It's I, I like how this one is actually built, because um, it looks like a uh, it looks like a um, ion um, platform that's been cut in half, and they used the bottom part as like a turret. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting. Mothership. But anyways, let's see. What else do we have about it? Um, it's strong versus nothing. It's a carrier. It's not really designed for combat. It's mediocre versus fighter and corvettes because of its uh, defense weapons that it has scattered throughout the ship. And it's weak versus bombers, frigates, and capital ships. Because again, it's not a, a warship. But yeah, here it is. Reporting. They took... <laughs> as you can see, it looks like they took uh, the... Um, uh, the fence platforms cut it in half and put the bottom half down um, below the ship. So, Acknowledged. pretty cool. Now, that allowed the carrier to defend itself against uh, small groups of frigates. So, if we read that, so yeah, it's an anti frigate self defense light ion cannon turret. It charges in seven seconds, has a range of six kilometers. So, mount location retractable, sensor hardpoint, effective against frigates, capital ships, and resource collectors. So, cool. Confirm. That's the defense module that you can build Mothership. on the auxiliary carrier. So description. Support carrier with multiple roles including ship production, resource processing, fighter corvette um, shuttling, and tactical command. So yeah, you can build your fighters, corvettes, and frigates from the ship. Can't build any capital ships, you can call in your shipyard if you want to. You can build your platforms from this guy, your resource collectors and stuff, your modules and whatnot. So this is basically the main um, uh, carrier from Homeworld 2. 
Okay, and then Mother the uh, next one we're going to take a look at is the Assault Carrier, which is basically the battle version of the Auxiliary Carrier, which we have right over here. As you can tell, it does look a little bit different. Um, we'll take a look at it. There's like, um, I think that's Electronic Warfare module. It's got a vertical launch cell, so like you can actually launch missiles at the enemy. It's pretty cool. Mother but let's read about it first before we really take a look at it. So... Assault Carrier, CBE-74, Roll, Anti-Fighter, Corvette, and Frigate. Secondary Roll, Frontline, fr uh, Fighter Production, Strike Craft Repair, and Support. Subclass, Strike Carrier. Build time, 95 seconds compared to 65 on the normal carrier. I wish this told you how many RUs built it requires, because this doesn't tell you because I already built it. I think it's probably 3,500. It's more expensive than the Auxiliary Carrier. But armaments, two ASM-25A 50 kiloton launchers. So I believe that is, no, it's not that guy right there. But it has a 50 kiloton missile launcher somewhere on this thing. Roger. Let's see if we can find it real quick. Nope. Boop, boop, boop. Might be this thing. I don't know. Confirmed. It's somewhere on that. Mothership. Three HPC 1250 dual plasma turrets. I think I saw that down here. Confirm. Yeah, here's one of those um, dual plasma turrets, and that's 1250, which is 1.25 gigawatts of power, which I believe is as much uh, power as the um, plasma Corvette. Yeah, it doesn't quite have as much as many turrets. So very powerful. Very powerful turrets, and here's the here's the other plasma one. So you have one in the front and one in the back. Reporting. Mothership. Then we also have one EPB 600 turret, which is a 600 megawatt turret. I believe that's like a pulsar defense turret, which is I believe also in the back Standing somewhere. By. On the ship somewhere. It probably would help if I bring this up and just look for it. Do do do. It's on here somewhere. <laughs> Mothership. But anyways, it also comes with one EMP or UMP six dual turret. I'm not too sure what that is, but it's a three kilometer range. I'm sure that's probably like an anti fighter turret. And it also has two LRCT twenty six ER launchers. So that is, I think, Bobby. might be part of the vert. Oh, so that's part of the vertical cells. So the LRAM Mothership. I believe we talked about that. They, no, that's the next one. The LRAM 22 launchers. Standing by. That's part of this. That's the anti frigate launcher. Mothership. And then we have the MRM 18 launchers, uh, which is the anti fighter. Mothership. Those are like concussion missile launchers. It has a 12 kilometer range. Wow. The other one has a 10 kilometer range. So that is a long range. Um, when it comes to like missile defense. Oh, I'm sorry. The LRCT is a 10 kilometer and the LRAM is 12. Okay. And the MRM, which is anti fighter, is 6 kilometers. Okay. Good to know. It also comes with two KAC 50 RF dual turrets at a distance of 2.4. I'm assuming that's probably like an anti missile turret. It has such a short range. Ready. There's a turret right there, too. So many turrets! This thing is decked. Confirmed. And let's see, what else do we have? An SRM-16 um, turret. I believe that's another missile launcher. And then two MWS hardpoints, which you can build on the ship. Reporting. That is right over here. So you can add even more turrets to the ship than what's already on this thing. So we can add a kinetic autocannon, which is a chemical-based uh, anti-autocannon turret with low muzzle velocity, high rate of fire, anti-fighter. It is a KAC-105, which is 105 millimeter, X4 or quad um, RF turret. So that is a very fast, very large anti-fighter uh, turret. So that's probably good against like, heavy fighters, I would assume. It probably decimate the light fighters. 
reload time, 0.2 second fire time, 1.2 second burst fire time, and one second reload, range of 2.5. So it's for defending the ship because it has a short range. Strong versus fighters, okay against corvettes, and weak against capital ships. Mountain location is starboard side. So for this, you can put one on the starboard side and one on the port side, I believe. So these top three are the starboards. Actually, all of these are starboard. This one might only have a starboard side that I can put on. Okay. Then after that, you have the Pulsar turret, which is your, your dual pulse ion turret, your anti-corvette weapon. Comes with a PIC 750, which is 750 megawatt dual pulse ion turret. And you got your proximity burst auto cannon turret, which is another anti-fighter one. The PAC 120 millimeter flak shells, which is 75 meter proximity burst radius, which means when it explodes, it hits everything that's within a 75 mil, uh, mil or meter radius around it. So it shoots, explodes, and then does an AOE effect around it. Good against large clusters of fighters. Okay against corvettes, doesn't do the damage to really hurt them. And then of course weak against capital ships. Then we have the cluster torpedo turret which is a long range cluster torpedo launcher, low rate of fire. This is anti-corvette. Um, it comes with two LRCT-26 cluster torpedoes, which I believe that's 26 kilotons. Um, so it's really good against corvettes, weak against fighters because uh, it's a slow moving um, missile. So it doesn't, the fighters can outmaneuver them and weak against frigates and capital ships because it doesn't do enough damage against those. And these ones, yeah, these three right here we get by doing extra research in the research queue, which I've already done. That's why they're unlocked. And um, these are like advanced like weapons that we can put on the ship. And then the final one we can make is the long range missile launcher, the LRAM-22. Long range missile launcher is anti-capital, anti-frigate. Um, does six LRAM-22 launchers, so it launches six missiles of 22 kilotons of TNT, so if they all hit, that's 120, 130 kilotons of TNT of damage, or explosion damage, that's going to do to the enemy. Lots of damage. And it's strong versus capital ships and frigates, mediocre versus nothing, and it's weak against fighters and corvettes because the missiles are too slow to track those. So it's really only good against slow moving targets. Uh, let's go ahead, let's see, can we put the pulse one? Right along. We can only put one on, okay. Sometimes you can put two on, but I, I think that's a, a different frigate, or a different um, um, carrier, because there, there's a, a carrier you get in the campaign um, called an escort carrier, you get like at mission two, and if you can keep it throughout the entire mission, you can upgrade it, but research you to, you, uh, you get throughout the uh, Homeworld 2 campaign, and it could, it's stronger oh, than the assault here. carrier, because it can have a starboard and a port side um, uh, defense system on it. Anyways, that's the assault carrier. This guy's primary purpose is to aid the main fleet by providing um, fire support and pr provide uh, fighter production for the fleet. Because this guy can only build fighters. He can't build corvettes and frigates like he can with the exalt right auxiliary along. carrier. You can also build platforms to help with the Not fleet. Resource operation you can do as well, and you can put modules and whatnot on it. But you can't, you can only build fighters. That's kind of its main purpose. And when it comes to holding ships, you can hold six squadrons of ships with this guy. And the auxiliary Ready? carrier, you can hold ten. So that's another weakness. Its hangar bay isn't as big um, as the auxiliary carrier. If you're the type of person who likes to fill up your carriers with a bunch of fighters and corvettes and launch them to help defend the fleet when you need them, uh, this one won't be able to do as much. Confirmed. Anyways, we got that um, turret done. Let's see where it is. That is the Pulsar turret. Do, do, do. It was the, it's the PIC at the 750. Oh, that's Copy. not what I wanted. I built it on the side. So it should be over here somewhere. Somewhere. Over the rainbow. PIC 750X2. There it is. Right next to the uh, plasma bomb launcher. So it will defend the, the top of the ship against uh, Corvette class ships. Oh, cool. Reporting. Yeah. And we are done with the carriers. Like I said, this video is going to be long. There's a lot of things that we have to talk about.
Uh, so next we have is are the destroyer class vessels. Oh. Mothership. Thank you. So the first destroyer we get are the light destroyers, which are pretty much the same destroyers you get in Homeworld 2. Uh, there's nothing like super special about them, but they have been upgraded and they have a uh, um, like. Their weapons act a little bit differently than the normal destroyer, so let's read about it. They're also more expensive than the normal destroyer. Uh, so, light destroyer DLK-70. Primary role, anti-frigate. The same roles it had in, um, in Homeworld 2. Secondary role, anti-capital ship. Again, same role. Uh, these guys were mainly designed to destroy large groups of frigates, but in a good, in about, if you had two or three of these, then they could, they could take down other destroyers, no problem. Subclass Destroyer, build time 105, so a little bit longer than the Assault Carrier. Tech level, Mark 1 Destroyer, gauge range medium, because of its long range uh, kinetic cannon turrets and its torpedo launcher in the front. Prerequisites, capital ship facility and the uh, DL chassis, so you have to build your capital ship facility and research the destroyer chassis in order to build this. Armament comes with four MC-80 550 dual mass driver turrets. That is 550 no, millimeters. So that's how big the barrel is on these, um, on these cannons here. 550 millimeters. That is a big round. Has a range of 5.5 kilometers and comes with two ASM-25, which are 50 kiloton launchers. So if both of these hit you at the same time, that's 100 kilotons of explosive damage that's hitting your hitting your ship. That is a lot of damage. Strong versus frigates, other destroyers, and carrier class ships. Mediocre versus nothing. Um, this ship is kind of um, you can kind of tell what is good against, what's bad against. There's nothing that's really okay against. And weak versus fighters, corvettes, uh, cruisers, and battleships. And the reason why it's not really mediocre versus cruisers because it doesn't have the whole capacity to um, have a long engagement with a cruiser class ship because they're a lot more powerful than destroyer class ships. So they are just weak against those. Description: Standard destroyer class warship, aimed, armed, not aimed, armed with mass driver turrets and anti-capital ship missiles. DLK-70s are effective against frigates and small capital ships. When upgraded, it becomes one of the fastest capital ship warships embodied, employed by the Higaran forces. That is one major um, advantage that the destroyer classes do have in this game, and probably this mod. Um, they are very fast for capital ship class. We, we move at 135. Ignored. Carriers move at 115. What about the auxiliary carrier? Copy. Auxiliary carrier is 80. So destroyers are actually faster than the carrier classes, which you would think carriers would be faster. But it's just because um, it's just because of the engines and the fact that they're um, lightly. I wouldn't say lightly armored. Standing by. Okay, they're lightly armored compared to carriers. <laughs> Carriers have 120,000 health, and this destroyer is 85,000. So they're lightly armored, have a lot of firepower, and have a lot of movement speed. So that's one thing that you might have to try to take advantage of when using these guys or going up against these guys. Is just keep that stuff in mind. The next, Mothership. next one we have is the Ion Destroyer, which is probably my favorite capital ship in this mod. And a lot of it is because Ready. if you look at it, it kind of gives me Kushan Destroyer vibes because there's a wing on the side that it, that it has built on. And the fact it has a lot of firepower and these engines here. I love the fact it has these secondary engines like on its wings. It really makes it look really, really cool compared to the other Destroyer classes. Anyways, let's take a look at them. So Ion Destroyer, primary role, anti-capital ship. So it's a lot more powerful than the normal destroyer. Subclass role, advanced destroyer. It is the upgraded version of the light destroyer. Build time 135, so it takes 30 seconds longer to build than the normal destroyer. Tech level, Mark II destroyer, because it's the upgraded version of the light destroyer. Engagement range, medium. Makes sense because of the turrets it has on and the firepower it has and the range of the firepower and whatnot. Prerequisites, capital class facility, destroyer, um, chassis or dh chassis and or dl chassis and dh chassis dl i believe is a light destroyer and dh is a heavy destroyer i believe 
believe that's what those are. Armament comes with two HIC 15,000, which is 15 gigawatt ion cannons. That's what these are. This destroyer has gotten rid of the torpedoes, um, the torpedo bay in the front, and replaced them with particle cannons or ion cannons. So it is very powerful. Also comes with three MRG 400 dual, which is 400 millimeters. That's these guys. Um, Railgun turrets. So these are the rail. These are the turrets that used to be on the light destroyer. They've been upgraded from mass drivers to rail guns, and they also are larger, 400 millimeters compared to 300. Or never mind, they've actually shrunk. I thought this was 350. So it's shrunk from 550 to 400, but it's a different type of weapon. So it is um, the weapons are much quicker because it's a rail gun instead of a mass driver. Um, but yeah, it still does a decent amount of damage. And also comes with three KAC 105 millimeter quad auto cannon turrets which are these things back here. That, 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 and I think there's another one somewhere. Or is it just three? It was just three, okay. So it's two on the wings, one on the back, and these are, I believe, anti... I don't know what kind of cannons they are. They're very large to be anti-fighter. They might be anti-corvette. Strong versus capital ships and stationary targets. So any target that has a difficulty moving or like really slow, like a shipyard or platforms, this thing is really, really good against. Mediocre versus frigates and resource operations. That's because frigates have a decent amount of maneuverability and a decent amount of speed. So the, the main cannon is going to have some difficulty getting at, um, aiming against frigate class ships, but the secondary cannons like the uh, the, um, the railgun cannon shouldn't have too diff too much difficulty killing frigate class ships. And of course it's weak against fighters, bombers, and corvettes because this ship isn't really designed to fight those type of, uh, those type of, um, ships. I'm really curious about the railguns, or the, uh, these things here. The auto cannons. They must just be really good against, like, frigates. And maybe, like, the other destroyer classes. Because I believe they shoot pretty quickly. They're just... Their shells don't quite do enough damage to really take down like destroyer class ships. Anyways, um, this guy is your main uh, anti-destroyer destroyer class. That's his primary purpose, but he's still pretty good against frigates and um, slow moving targets. But I love his design, that's why he's one of my favorites. I, I don't know, just these addition of these wings just make me, make me really happy. <laughs> and the fact that it's particle cannons instead of torpedoes. Okay, and now next, our final destroyer we can make is the Escort Destroyer. Standing by. So it still looks kind of similar to the other destroyers, but this one has a completely different role than the other ones. So let's take a look at it. Escort Destroyer. Primary role, anti-fighter, anti-corvette. Subclass, advanced destroyer. Build time, 125 seconds, so it's a little bit faster to build than the Ion Destroyer. Tech level none, um, which is kind of weird. That should be tech level two, because you get this after you unlock the ion destroyers. Engagement range medium, prerequisites, capital class facility, advanced research module, um, light destroyer chassis, heavy destroyer chassis, and DD defense field, which is for your escort destroyer, because, um, well, I mean, I'll read about it here in a moment. Armament, two um, ASM-25, which is a 40 kiloton launchers, which I believe is, is a little bit weaker than the light destroyers. Yep, 40 kiloton compared to 50 kiloton. That's these ones right here, and I believe they are lighter because uh, they are faster than the ones from the destroyer class, so they can take down uh, fast-moving um, uh, fighters and corvettes. Two HA HPC-1250 dual plasma turrets. So that is two 1,000 or 1.25 gigawatt uh, plasma turrets, which I believe are these guys here. Here's the front turret and the back turret. Roger. Uh, and then you also have two PAC 120 quad proximity burst turrets, which is that guy there, and then that guy on the bottom. 
So those ones are the ones that will shoot at the target and it will explode um, by the target and it will do an area of effect damage. So those are probably your anti-fighter turrets. And then we also have four MRM-18 launchers, which is like 18 kiloton launchers. Those are probably the anti-fighter concussion missile launchers, which are back here, I think. I don't really know what this is. Kind of strange. It's somewhere on the ship. I think it's actually this back launcher. Is I don't exactly see where the missile launcher would be. Oh wait, here it is. It's on the left side. So right there is the uh, the concussion missile launcher. And it also comes with a built-in defense field shield, which protects 1.6 kilometers uh, of space. Defense field powered up. Ah, that's what the back things are for. That's the defense field. Oh, indeed. That's cool. And now this entire area is defended by a defense field. Strong versus fighters and corvettes. This guy is designed to kill uh, fast-moving targets and um, designed to quote-unquote escort your fleet. Mediocre versus frigates and capital ships. Um, with enough damage, it could probably take out frigates. I don't know about capital ships. Um, it does have a lot of defense capabilities, so it might be able to survive against capital ships for a while. Weak versus strategic bombers and cruisers. That's mainly because uh, they have um, the ability to shoot from very far away, which uh, this guy doesn't have any like anti-missile or anti um, um, like any type of way to kill things that have long range. So that's its main weakness. Description, Advanced Destroyer incorporating a defense field system, providing the fleet with a dedicated anti-fighter, anti-corvette capital ship escort. The DDE-73 is designed to escort and shield... Power depleted. Recharging. ...is designed to shield and escort allied capital ships from opposing strike craft. So his primary role is to keep like the large ships, like the destroyers and battle cruisers and whatnot, provided um, some anti-fighter, anti-corvette cover. So... Really cool. This guy is very useful in the game. I really do enjoy using him. He is expensive though. I think he's like 4,000 or something uh, because of the defense field that it has built in. It requires a lot of research to get him unlocked, but he is definitely worth it to you keep your, your large capital ships alive from bombers and whatnot. And again, one thing I like about this mod, even though this is your anti-fighter, anti-corvette defense system, there are still bombers and corvettes um, that have uh, that can get around that weakness by attacking you from long range. So he doesn't make your fleet invulnerable, but he does protect them against the typical bombers and corvettes that could uh, cause harm to your large capital ships. Okay, and next one is one of, another one of my favorites in this mission or in this mod, the torpedo cruiser. Ready. It looks very basic, but if you go down here, right here is all of the torpedoes that it has docked in, um, and then you can launch them to uh, do some devastating damage to the enemy. And I love the fact that once these missiles are launched, you can actually come back here and you can see the missiles being reloaded as it gets ready to launch this next valley. I, I don't know, I really, really enjoy stuff like that when, when it comes to um, immersion uh, for these type of games. Anyways, let's read about it. Torpedo Cruiser CLG-88. Primary role, anti-capital, anti-frigate. Subclass, light cruiser. Build time, 155 seconds. So I believe that right now is the one that takes the longest to build of all the ones that we've looked at so far. But that's also because it's a cruiser class, not a destroyer class. So it's above the, uh, um, the destroyers. Tech level Mark 1 cruiser, engagement range long because of its uh, tor long range torpedoes, prerequisites advanced research module, and cruiser light class chassis, cruiser light chassis. Armament comes with 12 ASM 25 40 kiloton torpedo launchers, and the light destroyer has two of those. So this guy, actually, it's weaker than the light destroyer, so this is the same as the escort destroyers. Interesting, but they've been changed from uh, uh, missile launchers to torpedo. <coughs> Excuse me. They've been changed from tor missile launchers to torpedo launchers, so they act a little bit differently. I believe the torpedo launchers are a lot slower than the missile launchers. 
but it's also launching 12 of them at the same time, which is 480 kilotons of explosive damage that's going towards the enemy. That is a lot of damage, a lot of explosions. Also comes with two PIC 300 RF pulsar lasers, or CIWSs, which are very short range. 300 megawatt uh, pulsar lasers to defend itself against bombers and corvettes. So there's one on each side. It's not going to do much. It's going to slow down the enemy. But if there's a large group of bombers or whatnot coming in, it's not going to stop them. It's just some point defense system. So it has a little bit more than just, you know, torpedoes for the ship. So it's strong versus destroyers, light cruisers, and frigates because um, of. Uh, you have powerful torpedoes and launches. Mediocre versus other cruisers and corvettes. It doesn't quite have the hull to withstand a full battle against other cruisers, but if someone um, distracts the enemy while well, this guy provides a long range support, it'll work great. It's mediocre versus corvettes because uh, um, one, these torpedoes are too slow to track corvettes and fighters, so they're gonna be useless against them. It does have some point defense systems that can work against corvettes, but it's not going to be great against them. And weak versus fighters, bombers, and battleships because the, all of its armaments are too slow to really um, fight fighters and bombers, and it doesn't do enough damage to really take out a battleship. So, yeah, it'll lose that fight no, uh, really easily. Description. Light cruisers, outrange, and outgun destroyer class warships. The CLG-88 is armed with long-range torpedoes for engaging capital ships and frigates. A single salvo of torpedoes can decimate most frigate class warships. Yeah, that's 480 t tons of kilotons of TNT hitting a frigate class ship. I'm pretty sure it's not going to have the hold to survive that kind of impact. The CLG-88. Um, lacks the armor and defensive systems of heavy cruisers and battle cruisers, relying on long-range attacks for survival. Yep. Again, um, to use the ship properly, you want to have some sort of fleet that's distracting the enemy so they don't notice your torpedo cruisers hitting from far away. But if they notice your torpedo cruisers, um, this ship for a cruiser class ship doesn't have a whole lot of health, so it's going to get decimated by uh, um, heavy cruisers and, and battle cruisers like super easily, but it can easily provide some much needed support from uh, the main fleet if it's used properly. Okay, that is all the ships you can build from the mothership. Um, next ones have to be built from the shipyard uh, because of just how large they are. Because we have one more cruiser and then we have our two battle cruisers that we can build in this mod. So next we have another one of my favorite uh, capital ships, the Heavy Cruiser. I just love the purpose of this of this ship. It's like a, a um, it's like a dumbed down version of a battle cruiser that's just been full, that's just been full of kinetic turrets. That's like all of it. It is, and I love it so much. So, ready. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So, Heavy Cruiser. Primary role, anti-capital, anti-frigate, so kind of the same as the Ion Cruiser, subclass Heavy Cruiser. Build time 165, so it takes a little bit longer than the Torpedo Cruisers to be built, and it's also a little bit more expensive. Tech level, Mark II Cruiser, engagement range, medium. Prerequisites, research module, ship, shipyard capital ship facility, and cruiser heavy chassis. Armament, it comes with four MRG 550 dual mass driver turrets, which I believe are these. One, two, three, and then the fourth one on the bottom. Which, uh, it's funny, these are pretty big turrets on the destroyer class, but they don't look really big on a battle cruiser class or a heavy cruiser class. And then it also comes with two MRG 1250 um, triple barreled mass driver turrets. That's 1,250 millimeters, 1.25 meter how big these cannons are that's these guys right here they are gigantic <laughs> and then it also comes with two PIC 300 RF pulsar CIWS's so those are 300 megawatt uh, pulsar laser defense turrets uh, which are uh, they should be kind of in the same spot as the battle cruiser and yeah, there's one right there and there's one right there let's say there's two of them yep they're, they're both on the underbelly to protect it from like corvette and bomber raids. And then it can also get be upgraded using uh, two different hard points. Uh, so this is the one where you have one on the um, 
at starboard side and the one on the port side. So kind of, we already discussed these with the carrier class, but you can build those same modules from the assault carrier onto the heavy carrier or heavy cruiser. And then you can also give yourself a module system. I believe you can only put one on the heavy cruiser, even though it says if you have two available. Oh, right. That's right. You can, you can decide between all of these. You can put one module, you can put two modules and no weapons, or you can put two weapons and no modules, or mix it up and have like one module and one weapon. It just depends on how you want to customize your ship. Okay. But we're not going to build it because I, I kind of, well, I guess I could show off some of the other ones. Like the cluster yeah, torpedo the turret rocket. and the uh, proximity burst turret. We'll get those built real quick. Roger. But yeah, I love how big these gigantic turrets are on the heavy cruiser and all these different kinetic cannons it has. But while we're waiting for those to get built, Ready. let's read a little bit more about it. All going smooth here. So, this thing is obviously strong versus frigates and destroyers because of all the kinetic um, firepower it has behind itself. It's mediocre versus other cruisers. It can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against a cruiser by itself, but it's going to need some sort of backup in order to win the fight. So maybe having like another ion destroyer or um, having a torpedo cruiser in the back as um, assisting the heavy cruiser will help you win that battle. And it's weak versus fighters, bombers, and corvettes because Good. none of the... None of these... Uh, system construction complete. None of the kinetic cannon turrets can um, um, track fighters, corvettes, and frigates, and it does have a little bit of protection against them because of the pulsar defense weapons, but it's not going to be able to survive against a large fleet of them. Descri description. Versatile combat cruiser designed for medium range armaments with mass drivers, heavily armed and able to outlast destroyers and light cruisers in close to medium range combats or engagements relying on brute force for survival so yeah it does it does a, a lot of damage to uh, try to survive against the enemy okay and then we got the cluster torpedo system built it looks like that's what this thing around here is subsystem manufactured ah never mind it's back here so there's the cluster torpedo that launches torpedoes and it goes against the enemy and then we have the other one over here which is the... where are you again? Oh yeah, you're the um, uh, the proximity burst cannon, which we've seen on the destroyer class. Cool! And now that we've done that, we can't build any modules because those two defense turrets take up the modules. But cool! You can just design this thing the way you want. Okay, so that's all the cruisers. Reporting. Next! We need to take a look at the two battle cruisers that we can build in this mod. And the first one is the same battle cruiser Ready. that you can build in the um, in Homeworld 2. Obviously, it's been modified a little bit, but it's the same one from the original Homeworld 2. So let's take a look Ready. at it. The battle cruiser, the BLI 78. Roll. Anti cruiser destroyer. Subclass battle cruiser. Build time 220 seconds, so it's a lot longer than the cruiser classes, which makes sense because it's a it's a new class of ship. Tech level Mark 1 battleship. Engagement range long. It has a lot of long range uh, weapons, so it can fight enemies without them even being close to it. Prerequisites research module, advanced research module, ship capital facility. Uh, Cruiser heavy chassis and battle cruiser light chassis. Comes with two HIC 5000 dual ion turrets. That's 50 gigawatts. This turret up here requires 100 gigawatts of power to launch its power its particle cannon. I believe, and of course we have another one on the bottom. I believe that if if these things were actually really true, then the um, this thing would have probably three fusion reactors on it. One that runs the entire ship and the engines, and another one, and two other ones dedicated to running these particle cannons, because that is a crap ton of power. That is so much power. And that's why that those cannons are so deadly against other capital ships. 
And it also comes with four MRG 650 dual mass driver turrets. And it's these guys that are scattered throughout the ship. So there's one, two, uh, three, four, and there's two more. Four or six? It was four. Okay, I thought it was six for some reason. One, two, and then three and four. And it comes with four PIC 300 RF Pulsar CIWS turrets. That's these like little ones right here. So you have one, two here, and then you have three, and then four. And then seven KAC 50 dual kinetic turrets, which are these um, small turrets that are kind of scattered throughout the, the ship. So there's two there. These I believe are anti-fighter turrets. Yeah, they're only 50 millimeters, so they have to be anti-fighter. There's two more up there, and there's a few somewhere right there. There's one there. Yeah, and there's two more. And there's two there in the back, so that's all seven. And then you can upgrade it with two more of the hard points, uh, which I don't Roger. think the hard points really... Oh, wait, they do change. Okay, okay. So the battle cruisers have different hard points. The only ones that are different is the long range missile launcher, which is anti corvette, anti fighter, which I believe we had on the carrier, and then the large mass driver that's anti corvette, anti fighter. Let's get that one built. And then what do we have over here? It's all the same. Let's build one of each. Reporting. I want to see the, the giant mass driver. But, anyways, okay. let's read a little bit more about it while we're waiting for those to get built. Strong versus frigates and capital ships. Makes sense. Kinetic turrets, very powerful ion turrets. So it's great against anything that's bigger than a frigate class ship. Mediocre versus fighters and other battle cruisers. Again, makes sense. It's a battle cruiser, so if it go up against if it goes up against another battle cruiser, it's gonna need some assistance, either with like a, a, an a, a battle cruiser next to it or some sort of artillery protecting it and providing some fire support. You'll need some other assistance to fight other battle cruisers, and of course, weak against bombers and corvettes because it's a battle cruiser. Battle cruisers are powerful capital ships armed with long range weapons and equipped with strong armor plating designed specifically to eliminate Suspect hostile cruisers, for operation. destroyers, and strike carriers. So, yeah, it is designed to kill destroyers, cruisers, needs some help against other battle cruisers because it's going up against itself. Um, and not really good against uh, fast moving fighters and corvettes, but that's also why Roger. it has its own docking base. So you can dock some fighters and corvettes to protect it against those, launch it when you uh, start getting in danger, and everything will be hunky dory. Good, keep it moving. This over here, oh my god, that is that is a massive turret. Oh my god, <laughs> it is a 400 millimeter. Um, Six barreled, I forget what six, six is. Six, six, I forget what it is. Six barreled kinetic turret. It's coming together. That, that's gonna do some major damage. Um, that's actually large enough to do damage against a destroyer class. It'll wipe out frigates, but this can easily do some damage against destroyers. Wow, amazing. And then this over here, we have the missile launcher. Acknowledged. LRAM long range missile launcher. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Standing by. Well, that is the battle cruiser class ship um, that you can build in this mod. Now. Ready. I'm. Now we have one more capital ship, the battleship. Or this is the battle cruiser. Sorry about that. The battleship is the most powerful warship that we can build in this mod. I think it costs like 9,000 RUs. It's very expensive. I think the battle cruiser costs like 6,000. But this thing is powerful. I also love the way it looks. I, I, I really love these ships that have the, the side wings for some reason. I don't know why. The side thrusters on the wings. This makes it look so much cooler. Standing by. Yeah, I keep doing that. I don't mean to. Anyways, let's read about them. So battleship. B BH I 78. This is your anti cruiser, anti destroyer, subclass battleship, build time 265 seconds. So it's about 45 seconds longer than the battle cruiser. 
Um, tech level Mark II battleship, engagement range long, prere prerequisites, shipyard, capital ship facility, advanced research module, um, cruiser heavy chassis, battle cruiser light chassis, and battle cruiser heavy, we heavy weapon systems. Armament comes with two P HIC 5000 tech um, dual barreled uh, 50 gigawatt ion turrets, which again are at the top and bottom. Those are your primary weapons when it comes to your battle cruisers. Or MRG 650 dual mass uh, driver turrets. Again, those are that one up there, that one here, and then these two down here. Or a um, ASM 29 100 kiloton torpedo launchers, which I believe are these side things. These are again 100 kilotons, which means if all of these torpedoes hit, they will do 400 kilotons of damage. That. That's a lot of damage, plus also stacked with the ion turrets. Four P PBC 900 plasma turrets, so 900 megawatt plasma turrets, which are about as much damage as the bombers. That's still pretty darn good. Uh, oh, that's these things right here. You got those, those. There's probably two more on the bottom somewhere. Ah, there they are. One there, one there. Uh, four PIC 300 RF pulsar um, laser turrets, which are these things right here in the same area as the battle cruisers. And then we also have six SRM 16 missile launchers, which I believe are like 25 kilotons or 20, something like that. That I believe is in the back, if I remember. I think it's these right here. Or wait, no, no, it's this thing right here. This little missile launcher. <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe that's like the anti-fighter missile launcher. And it upgrades with two hard points. Let's see, is there anything new on the hard points? Nope, not really. They're all the same. Ready. Okay. Same as the battle cruiser. So we're not gonna go through that. Strong versus frigates and capital ships. Mediocre versus fighters and corvettes, because it has some anti-fighter defenses like the missile launcher and the um Pulsar turrets are for like anti-corvette, so it has some defenses against them, but again, not designed to go out to kill them, it's just designed to survive against them. Weak versus strategic bombers, which are the long-range bombers that can fight this thing before it even gets in range of anything. But it should take down like normal bombers if they try to kill this guy. Description: A full-scale battleship outmatches all other capital ship classes and is the strongest capital ship employed by the Hyagarans. So this is your end-all, kill-all ship, but again, it still has weaknesses. It can't take down a huge squadron of bombers on its own. It does have anti-fighter weaponry, but a squadron of like, like 10 squadrons or something of bombers could easily take this guy out. Or the strategic bombers, which launch their bombs like 10 kilometers away, where the uh, um, defense system can't do anything because it has no anti-missile defense system. That's, that's a way that you can take this down if you don't have the firepower. Again, one of the things I love about this game, even though you have the strongest ship in the game, there are still weaknesses that can take it down. It's not in the end-all, beat-all ship like some of the, some of the ships that are in complex. Okay, so that is all the capital ships. I also want to go over the mothership and shipyard, because I believe there is like a module and whatnot that we can build on the shipyard. Or wait, maybe there's a research we can do. There's a research we can do that I totally forgot to do. You can put a, um, MRM 18ER missile launchers on the shipyard, which activates missile launchers on the shipyard. Extend, extended range missiles are capable of reaching standoff range attack bombers. So this is the shipyard's defense against the um, uh, against the missile uh, frigate and the strategic bombers. So that's that's a secret that might help you guys out if you're if you play the campaign and struggle a little bit on some of the missions. That we have to build it. I think it just automatically installs it once it's upgraded. Because there is. Yeah, right here. Here's the missile launching system. That so protects your shipyard against uh, those long-range missiles, so they can't like cheat and kill your shipyard that will like do dumb stuff. But anyways, there's not a whole lot I really have to talk about for the shipyard. We'll just read its description. Mothership. 
Because I'm pretty sure if any of you guys played Homeworld 2, you know what the shipyard is. So shipyard, primary role, heavy capital ship protection. This is a, the main ship that you'll be using to build your battle cruisers and any other type of large capital ships. Secondary role, fleet support servicing station. It can be used to repair the large capital ships. Subclass shipyard, build time 75 seconds. Uh, tech level Mark II production ship, because it's the one that's above the mothership. Engagement range, short to medium. Prerequisites, research module and hyperspace module. Ugh, excuse me. Sorry, I don't mean to keep like stuttering like there. I keep having like burps that are like coming up and not coming up all the way, so they're kind of annoying. So I apologize about that. Armament 12 KAC 35RF hold defense gun. So it has 12 35mm hold defense guns for like fighters and whatnot. They're scattered throughout. We're not really going to spend the time finding them because I think you can't really see the hold defense guns. Because that's just the way Homeworld is. And then they also have 12 KAC 30RF fluctuate guns, which are the anti fighter guns. So it does have some protection against fighters. Um, but again, it's a shipyard. It's not designed to fight against them, it's designed to survive against them. And when you upgrade it, you can get three MRM 18ER launchers, which are 8 kilometer, um, 20, 25 kiloton TNT missile launchers that can help take down those long range bombers that can be really, really annoying. Strong versus nothing, again, shipyard. Mediocre versus fighters and corvettes. Weak versus bombers, frigates, and capital ships. Again, it's a production level production ship it's not designed to really go in combat description mobile shipyard equipped with a super capital ship production facility that's about all you need to know this is the ship that can build everything in the game just like in can in homeworld 2 its primary purpose is usually to build the large capital ships because the mothership can't build them and yeah that's about all you need to know you can also i believe Ready. you can dock like i think maybe destroyer class ships Maybe you can't. I thought you could dock like your capital ships in the shipyard and, hang, and I can repair it. Confirmed. But nope, you can't. Uh, and again, you can build everything from it. And I don't think there's anything that's really special about it in this mod. Other than the fact it, it can uh, have a turret that can, or a missile launcher system that can shoot down those large, those annoying strategic bombers that circle around and do massive amount of damage to your capital ships. It can be quite annoying, but if you have uh, ships that can shoot them down or ships that have uh, anti-missile uh, defense turrets, then you can use those to protect your fleet, basically. Mothership. And last but not least, we have the Mothership. Good old Mothership. With uh, Glaceon over here on the side. Some of you guys were wondering like what this uh, item, what this uh, icon was. Um, in this mod, there's a lot of different icons you can use from like different games and whatnot, and some of them have, are like Pokemon. I was like, eh, I'll make Glaceon the uh, um, the Higarans, and when we fight the Vega, I'll make them Emporion or something. <laughs> Why not? I like Pokemon, so. Also, it kind of goes pretty well with my color scheme, so whatever. In case you guys are curious, that's what that is. Anyways, their mothership is the first ship you start off when you play Homeworld or play Homeworld 2 and play this mod. So I we don't have a description or anything that we can read from it because I don't believe you can build it in this mod. But it's basically your main ship that you can build your fighters, corvettes, frigates, capital ships, your um uh I forgot what these things are called, the uh, platforms, which we will be going on over these and these in the next in the next episode, and we'll have all of the Higarns covered. And then, of course, you can build all of your sub, your modules and whatnot. Research module, advanced research module, hyperspace module, gravity well, which uh, prevents people from hyperspacing around you, cloak generator, which cloaks your ship so people can't see it, fire control module, which uh, um, coordinates your uh, weapons so they can hit the target a little bit easier. And, of course, we have our sensors, the hyperspace sensors, which lets you know when someone hyperspaces around you, so you're aware. Advanced sensors array, which drastically improves your sensor radius. Advanced cloaking sensors, which um, allows you to see cloaked ships that are around you. I just quickly went through those because we're not going to be covering that stuff. Most of that is still standard from Homeworld, so... Yeah. But yeah, here is the mighty mothership. There's nothing special you can do about it compared to like the old Homeworld games, or to Homeworld 2. It's pretty much the same. 
has the same roll. And it does do a lot more damage than Homeworld 2, though, because I would think they get buffed up the whole defense guns. So they can actually shoot down the enemy instead of just slowly damaging them. They're a lot more powerful like they were in Homeworld 1. And you also start off with a little bit more health on your mothership compared to Homeworld 2, which I think was 200,000. You start off with 250,000. And I think that still upgrades to 400,000. It just upgrades 75k instead of 100k, like in Homeworld 2. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to do it. This was about an hour long. I was expecting this to be a long video because there was a lot to talk about when it comes to the capital ships that we could do and what they're strong against and what they're weak against. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you did, please leave a like. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, I'll check you guys out in the next video. Until then, oh, let me get this thing to go away. Get closer to the... Heavy Destroyer or Heavy Cruiser, which uh, again is one of my favorite capital ships. And let's make this make this a little bit better. There we go. That looks a little bit more menacing. Get the antennas in. <laughs> Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a like if you did. If you like what I do, consider subscribing and I'll check you guys out in the next video. Till then, this is Captain Sobon signing out.